25th, 2000, Bedford Adam AAA wind up. like you used to give us in the dressing room before the games. Remember how we used to talk a lot, right? You used to get tired and sick of that, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, maybe you learned a thing or two. Uh, first of all, I'd just uh, like to say a, a general thank you to, to everybody. And uh, I say that on behalf of uh, all of the 17 players and Mike and Steve and I. I direct this at the, the parents of all the families. It's, uh, it's a long season. It's a big commitment to be involved with competitive hockey, such as we experienced this past year. And uh, the, par the players maybe don't realize it as they're young, but uh, as you grow older, you'll, you'll come to understand the support that you get from your parents and your families for all of your activities, and particularly this year with the hockey. Along with the parents, I'd like to thank all the siblings, representatives here today, <laughs> they and bought the games and uh, funded all of the canteens in the metro area. <laughs> so, so 17 players, let's hear it for the parents and siblings. few of the uh, individuals in the room that we'd like to make special mention of for the contributions this year. As you all know, it takes a lot of effort from a number of people to, to run a team successfully. And uh, certainly we have lots of support uh, this year from volunteers. It really helped things quite a bit. Uh, first of all, Chairman of the Fundraising Committee, Tom Hardigan. <laughs> fundraiser for the year it was our calendar. I'd like to thank Mike Barkley for helping us. <laughs> also, uh, special thanks to Mike for tracking the shots on goal. This was something that we started about 10 or 15 games into the season and uh, it became quite a helpful tool in talking to kids after the game to discuss the shots on goal and, and they became quite interested and whether we had hit certain targets, like it said for both in terms of total shots and the quality shots that they, uh, they got. So it became a, 
something the kids look forward to after the games, and I want to thank you, Mike, for that. And I understand that as well that from time to time, Judy pitched in and got things started in the place. So. Clock for our home games. Chris Harms, I believe, was responsible for organizing our clock duty. Thank you, Chris. Well, I didn't pay uh, total, very close attention to it. I understand that that wasn't a terribly demanding job because you had three willing and able volunteers who did it most nice for you. And uh, I would like to, uh, to thank Kate Hardigan, Matt LeBlanc, and the yeah. Mayor for the clock. <laughs> I'd like to call up uh, Matt and Nicole and Kate. We have a small gift for you to thank you for all your efforts. Yeah. persuasive techniques and oh, it's just taking the skating lessons. I probably won't like it. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the older two fell in love with the skating lessons. And, and finally one day she broke down and when the novice started we went to, uh, to the Simpson Sears or something on a Saturday morning with all of our coupons in hand. And it was just like the Mighty Ducks movie, the gear was flying and all that stuff. We got the boys outfitted. So it started out that way and uh, of course uh, Mitchell and Andrew was Connor following two days, two years later, uh, fell in love with the game. Then came competitive trials. Well, we don't want to do this competitive stuff. That's, that's, for the, that's for the birds, but you know, the boys wanted to try it just to see, and they may not like it. They probably won't make it anyway, you know. So, when we 
went, and then that fateful day he was here four years ago when they both made their first competitive team, she finally gave in. Got drunk, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I say, if you can't beat them, you better join the comes to mind. So, anyway, it's been a uh, very busy year for us in our house. Of course, Nani's carried quite a load and certainly supported uh, all of our activities, and I just wanted to publicly acknowledge uh, what we've done for us all. Player presentations. We have 17 fantastic young players on our team this year, and uh, I've had the opportunity to coach for a few years now, and I, I must say that in terms of overall, we the boys uh, haven't seen anything like this ever before. I hope I do again, but I'm not so sure I will. Um, to have boys that are as talented as this group and have the balance across the team is really quite something. And the thing that was uh, the most remarkable is how uh, they all got along together. It did not matter when they came into the dressing room who they were sitting by on a given night. Uh, they instantly picked up a conversation, asked how things went to school. Uh, I don't remember any spats in the dressing room that would step in. And <laughs> Maybe they were doing it behind her back, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it, uh, in addition to their play on the ice, I, I think it really was, it was quite a remarkable season in terms of how they all became friends and got along and were very unselfish one towards the other. So with that, we'll give a big round of applause to the team. <laughs> So we have for each of the players two things to give tonight. We have a letter, which is a fairly simple letter, but it just uh, summarizes some of the thoughts that the coaches have about the season. Uh, talks about uh, the team and, and how we believe uh, we had such a wonderful year. And it uh, provides a few comments with each of the players in terms of what we think their strong points are and where they perhaps should focus future hockey improvement in terms of different skills they want to work on. And all of those comments are intended to be very positive, so that as you go to your summer hockey or back in the fall, if you want to focus on certain skills to help you enjoy the game more, and we thought we'd give you a little bit of input. There also is some statistics there about our team record for the year. Uh, I did put down the number of games and played like that confidentially. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to get in too much trouble or anything. Uh, I did touch on the, the fun we've had, and uh, that very much has been the, the backbone of the team. But we also had a, a quite an unbelievable season on the ice in terms of our record and our score. And I think a lot of that is, is because of the way the boys played as a team and as a group of friends. So that's all there. We did not put individual statistics in. This, this year we tried to focus on the team and how the team did. And so uh, with that philosophy in mind, we, we have not included individual goals and assists and goals against percentages and all that kind of stuff. Um, there comes a time in hockey where those numbers perhaps are appropriate to be shared, but the, the coach has decided that at this point um, we wanted to focus on the team part of the game. And so that's uh, how we approached it. We have that letter for you to take home and have a look at and read with your parents and you might want to tuck away when it's something interesting to read a few years down the road. Also, Mr. Horwich will model our momentum for the year. We have a wristwatch for each of the players. And it's a very special wristwatch. In addition to telling me the times, so you know when to be at your practices in the game. <laughs> <laughs> it also has the, uh, the watch also has the Bitford Blues logo on the face of the watch. Out of the play, 99-2000, I get it as a player's number.
First player is one of our goaltenders. Uh, this guy, no question, deserves the award for the most prepared, ready to go. He's going to be on the ice. You're not going to miss the starting lineup award. That's Jack Hardigan. Game for the Oktoberfest tournament. It was on a Saturday afternoon. Or something. <laughs> All by yourself in the line, like that. <laughs> Jack, I come into the rink like our game was at two o'clock or something. I come in the rink at quarter one. Jack was standing there, all in his gears, mask on, ready to go on the ice an hour and a half before we started. <laughs> Jack loves to play. He also he's an exceptionally fast goalie, a very hard worker, very quick in the net, and uh, I think probably. <laughs> I think probably the highlight for Jack this year, and I think most of the stands would agree, was the game that he came in with just a few seconds left in the third period against Cole Harbor. Very tough for goalie to come in and then stone in three periods in overtime for a shutout in overtime. That was quite amazing, eh? <laughs> now the rest of you will know not to jump up so quick, right? <laughs> You have to wait for the speech before you get your watch, or else you have to stand in front of the <laughs> uh, our, our other goaltender, oh, the other thing I was going to say about Jack is uh, we were very lucky this year that we had goaltenders that were at both ends of the spectrum in terms of their personalities. On the one hand, we had the soft spoken, quiet, went about his business, Jack Hardigan. And on the other end, we had our very competitive, exuberant, Willing to say his piece. Josh. <laughs> okay. So our next player is Josh. Uh, Josh, uh, Josh's big uh, attribute as a goaltender are uh, his uh, way he plays his technique, his excellent positioning, plays his angles very well, very strong skater, and uh, those things really help him to be a little top tier goalie as well uh, this year. Uh, Josh very much loves the game, very good competitor, and he's really interested in learning. I think uh, probably there was a couple of highlights that came to mind for Josh this year. I think one of them probably was being the Nets when we beat Cole Harbor down the Western Valley for him. Uh, the other one that may not stand over people's minds quite as much. What I remember very vividly is it was a run of the middle league game over in Dartmouth in the Bulls rank one night, I think back in December. And our 15 skaters that night were thinking about their girlfriends or schoolwork or something, I'm not exactly sure. But we ended up beating Dartmouth one to nothing, and I think uh, Josh faced a lot of very challenging shots that night. I think that was probably his best game of the whole year, really. It uh, ended up not being a championship game, but I would say he won the game pretty well all by himself for us.
the highlight uh, that we, we identified uh, for Justin in what came in the championship game at the Christmas tournament in Turl. And on that game, he set up as a face off and the other team's end. And wasn't the championship? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to remember. See, I knew it was a highlight for you. <laughs> and uh, seven and one, one back to the puck, clean on the face off, and the winger did an excellent job blocking out the guy. And Justin buried the one time right in the net. It was probably one of our most pretty goals this year. That was a highlight, wasn't it, Justin? <laughs> Uh, Justin at the next practice had a little discussion with Mr. Horrocks, Mike, you might want to share, share how that went. Well, we were skating around, warming up, and Justin had this big grin. He said, he was skating around like he does, right? He was going along. He said, you know something? I said, what, what was that? He said, I prayed for that goal. Always helps to have the big fellow on your side. <laughs> <laughs> Justin is defense partner, another big physical guy, Michael Crozier. <laughs> Michael, uh, excellent powerful stride as a defenseman, he plays a very good physical. Steady kind of style. Uh, many of you may not realize it, but Mike was very much a student of the game in a very quiet kind of way. Uh, he, he always was asking questions about how he was playing and how he could improve his play, and just like being very interested in and working, working at that. And I think we'd all agree that uh, the results of that interest showed on the ice. I think Mike was very, very strong as the season developed in that type of thing. We had a hard time kind of figuring out the highlight for Mike. They all centered around body checks. One of the leading uh, candidates for the highlight was a big check he delivered over PBI that uh, this American Mike remembered. I couldn't quite picture that one, but that was right out there. And then uh, the other one, uh, the third game, no, second game against Cole Harbor, the one that was the full time goal on. Uh, Mike uh, ended up giving a guy a pretty good bop right in front of where the stands are. And uh, the next game, the boys were over at our house for a free game. We were playing the video and all that stuff. And they were watching the game. They watched the overtime goal once. But they wanted to watch this check that Mike delivered. They must have watched it 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, Mike scored a goal for us earlier in the year. He came to the bench. He was quite excited because he confessed that that was the first goal he scored, I think, since Novice Hopes. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, great season, Mike. Thanks. You're welcome. Sticking with the defense. Next guy, one of our left defensemen, I believe, was our first year. Defenseman Andrew Harms. Andrew, no question, I believe, is one of the top skaters on our team. He has an excellent skating stride both forward and back and has all of his edges to stop both ways. And if you're running a hockey school and you wanted a demonstrator for hockey as to how to skate, this guy would be one of our top candidates, wouldn't all he? Right. Huh? <laughs> Steady style, and I think we'd all agree became a one on one specialist. He could just stop those guys coming down the boards, there's no way they were going around. It was, uh, it was fantastic to see. He also very much became, uh, came to understand his role as a defenseman and really embraced it as the season went on. He became, became very comfortable with what a defensive person was seeing, which was really pleasing to see. The highlight that we picked for, for Andrew was not his goal in the Cole Harbor series. You remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the highlight. <laughs> the, highlight the highlight for Andrew, there was a, uh, 
There was a game up in Truro, I believe it was the semi-final game over at the Bird Ring, we might stand corrected on this, where we were in a very tight game with Truro, and there's a three-on-one coming down on him. And three of the top forwards for Truro were trying to get in, and Andrew played perfectly. He and Andrew played stopped it, and we ended up winning the game two to one. And I think uh, defensemen quite often will make a strong defensive play that gets overlooked. That becomes just as important or more important than scoring a goal at the other end. And the coaches thought that was one of them. So, and a great season. And his partner at the last part of the year was Patrick LeBlanc. That's oh. amazing. Pat has an excellent shot. His big attributes, both in terms of his wrist shot and as well as slap shot. And quite often, we get players that have a good wrist shot and not a slap shot, or vice versa. It's quite unusual to get a guy <laughs> that can shoot the puck in a very versatile way. And uh, I think that's uh, one of that, uh, Pat's big pluses. He has, he has very good puck movement, uh, much like some of the other players who believe he improved quite a bit as the season went on, especially as he started to gain his confidence and his comfort level. Christmas on and really, uh, really came on to be a very, very strong defenseman. Pat gets our award for the player who sweats the most. <laughs> it was a three-minute warm-up or one of those freezing cold practices at the Devonshire in January. When you come off the ice, Pat was just dripping. So I, I don't know whether that's some uh, physiological thing or it was a reflection of how hard he worked, but anyway, he certainly, uh, certainly was drenched every time he came off the ice. Uh, the highlight uh, we identified for Pat is uh, during the Provincial Series, one of the games in Bedford, I believe. He, uh, he had a one on his face with the one on one with Blake Gallagher. And for any defenseman, that's certainly a big challenge. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Pat stuffed him, and uh, that was a very that's big right. play for us, so congratulations. Tell you which it is. It's big physical style. Love the physical play. I know, we got two guys. Thomas Craig. <laughs> Thomas, uh, Thomas has exceptional speed. In fact, when we were doing the tryouts and did some of the race trails, there was nobody but nobody that could beat him. Very fast, which gave him a real, real big advantage. He was making a pinch and he had to get back quick to his own end, and he certainly used that speed. Help the team a lot. Thomas was famous for his behind the net reverse play. Carry the puck behind the net, stop and go the other direction, throw the other team off. In fact, it was something that every time it happened, it had all of us sitting on the edge of our seat <laughs> in anticipation of what was going to happen between the coaches. But uh, he delivered for us, and it was a very, very good play for a defenseman to have. Um, I don't know, Mike, maybe you want to share the, uh, the highlight for Thomas, that uh, play he had. Do you remember that one? Oh, yes, very well. <laughs> Thomas, had, Thomas had an altercation with uh, Blake Gallagher in the corner oh, yeah. in the Cole Harbor series oh, and knocked him down, just flattened him down. Thomas came to the bench. I said, what were you saying to him? Thomas says, bring it on, Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs>
just in terms of uh, any of the goals he scored, but helped create a lot of opportunities for, for his linemates uh, when he joined the rush. Uh, the highlight, we had a couple of them. Um, one was a, was a goal that he scored uh, in the championship game with Spud Tournament with about 40 seconds left. A nice goal from the point to tie the game. We ended up losing, but of course, the, uh, that was a big goal at that point in time. And made us all jump off and touch the roof. I know that's uh, how high we jumped on the bench. That was a very exciting moment for Mitchell. And the other one came in the game over in PEI, the UPEI rink against West Prince. Oh, nailed it. Oh, nailed oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. carried the puck the blue line. And Mitchell lowered the shoulder and put him down. There was no call. I think he found that pretty exciting. <laughs> 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 I remember quite vividly in the dressing room afterwards, uh, we were talking to the kids about, about that style of play and how sometimes if you're in a game where the referees let you play physical, that especially the defensemen, you should take advantage of that to help you play. And uh, the coaches were talking about that. And uh, one, of us, one of us was reflecting on back to our playing days and how we used to enjoy that part of the game. And when you put a guy down like that, we just stood over him with a little mean look on your face and you said, see you next shift. <laughs> <laughs> kids got quite a kick out of that, didn't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, congratulations on a great year, Mitchell. Excellent mobility on his skates, lateral movement, and the way he, he can twist and turn. He sees the play very well, one of our top passers. And he also finishes very well around the net. He has that special ability to put the puck in uh, when he's in tight. In terms of a highlight, he struggled to come up with a specific play for Danny, and, and really why that was when we thought about it, is that for Danny, the highlight is the versatility that he brings to us, and he exhibited that every time he was out. I spoke of that a few minutes ago, but being able to play every position all the time throughout the entire length of the season is a highlight in and of itself, and that's the one that we wanted to recognize over Danny tonight. So, congratulations. <laughs> Could you tie up my skates, please? Could you tie up my skates? And 
my back sore and I'm getting old and all that kind of stuff. But Brad keeps saying, Mr. Orwood, can you tie up my skates? I said, yeah, sure, Brad. New skates? Yeah, yeah, okay. After a while, I found out why. I found a penny halfway through the season, I guess it was, Brad, about halfway through the season. And I said, this is a lucky penny. And I tapped each of the skates. And every time that I tie up the skates, I'd reach in and I'd find another lucky penny. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a lucky quarter, might be a lucky dime, and I tap the skates, and he'd always get me to tie up the skates on the dressing room, and he had a great year too. Oh, that's <laughs> Checkers. There was a number of games that were very tight that he saved the goal by back checking got rid of the neck and net and uh, tying him up at the last minute, which is a big plus to the team. He also was able to contribute very well with his aggressive four checking. And I remember vividly a goal that uh, was scored in Truro again, where we dumped the puck in and, and Nathan went in really fast, banged the defenseman off the puck, picked it out, and passed it over front to Alex. And Alex finished it off as he did some times this year and got a fantastic goal that was earned because of Nathan's hard four check and we saw a lot of that this year. Um, we thought the highlight for Nathan came late in the season uh, in a game where uh, we didn't have a lot of luck but the, the semi-final game against Sackville at St. Mary's uh, the coaches felt it was Nathan's best best game of the year. He was really rocking that night and uh, had an excellent game and, and uh, we saw that as being the highlight. Uh, Nathan, very, very supportive of his teammates. I remember a game quite clearly after uh, we got the overtime goal in the Cole Harbor Series. We were in the dressing room and the kids were talking and it was fairly quiet in the room. And uh, Nathan blurted out at the top of his lungs with a big beaming smile on his face, Alex, I love you, man! I love you. <laughs> Our 
play winger, Alex Lovely. <laughs> Big claim to fame for Alex is his breakaway speed down the wing. He was racing for the puck, and you can see the other team's net in sight, and he was just a blind. He also gets our award for earliest to practice. Greg used to tell me how he'd be sleeping in his gear the night before, the skates talking in his room. <laughs> At the practices, he was always there before pretty near anybody. First on the ice with the skate guards, and, uh, and really liked that time that we had before practices in the morning. The, uh, just to diverge a bit or digress for a minute, the, uh, when you take these coaching course, courses that uh, we take these days, you, you learn a number of things, and, and one of the things they teach you is, is has to do with psychology of young players and this type of thing. And uh, I looked this up today just to remind myself of it, but um, one of the sections tells you that there's four reasons why uh, young players play the game of hockey. And if you come to understand those reasons and how they apply to different players, it helps you communicate with them. Well, the four reasons are they play for excellence, for affiliation with their fellow teammates, uh, for the success that they enjoy from the game, and finally, for the sensation of playing hockey. And when they're talking about sensation, they're talking about the feel of the ice and the rip your skates and all of these types of things. And that last one, the sensation is what quite clearly drives Alex, I think you'd agree. Alex, would you? Yeah. Well, we, we passed out a questionnaire at the beginning of the year and we asked the kids, why, what do they enjoy about playing hockey? And I, this is word for word. Uh, I think this is a fantastic answer. Alex came back. I love the feel of all the spectators cheering when you get a goal. <laughs> so a tremendous feeling. And of course, one of our biggest goals this year that overtime goal against Cole Harbour. You got the feel it right there, didn't you? Peter <laughs> <laughs> Morwich, one of our very reliable speaking up fingers. Peter, very quick on the ice, very stops and starts and turns around like you just don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> Hustles all the time, a very, very hard worker. My Pete, uh, he passes well, he's always thinking about where his line mates are and whether they're in a better position to get the puck than he is so he can pass to them. I think of all of the players on this team, uh, someday, or Peter's the one that someday most likely will be a coach. He's very interested in what we say has very mature thoughts and understands the game at a very high level. And uh, I think he exhibits a lot of things that they can believe someday he'll be an excellent coach for his children and other people that he might be involved with. He gets our meanest award, because he, every game he takes out that front tooth and he becomes our meanest looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> and for, uh, for Peter, the highlight that we, we identified was a goal that he scored in the Joel Montagne tournament. Fortunately, I was away, so I didn't get to see it live. But uh, as I understand it, he was coming up his wing, and Michael Vasey made a real nice cross-ice pass to him. And Peter had to really stretch to get the pass, pass, which he did. And he went in on a breakaway, guys chasing him, but he skated right away from him, made a real nice deep, and beat the goalie. And I think that was uh, a big goal for, for, uh, for Peter. Mike told me that I might, uh, might be able to catch it on the tape, but he figured that probably that part of the tape was more out because Peter played the back. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on a good year. Big right winger, power forward, Michael Basie. Yeah. Michael's another one of these guys that has tremendous speed. When he gets those legs pumping big, long, flowing strides, skates right away from anybody. We use that very effectively, not only on offense, but with some very, very timely uh, back checking that, that helped us defensively as well. Different players uh, make a team for different reasons during the tryouts. Some uh, you pick early on because of certain skills you see, 
and uh, for other players, there's a very specific defining moment that you can identify in the trial process where uh, you say, there's a guy that's going to make the team. And that, that was the case with Michael. There was one of our scrimmages, and there was still a number of kids we were looking at at the time, and uh, there was a scrum in front of the net. There was four guys hanging off Mike, one on each arm, one on each leg, and he, he determined he was going to get a goal and shook all these guys off and planted himself. He got a hold of the puck and moved right up under the crossbar. And I remember seeing that and saying, holy smokes, that's quite something for a young Adam player to have that determination to score a goal and use his size to his advantage. And so I picked Mike right there. He's going to be on the team on that play, thinking he was going to be one of our big power forwards and really add to the team. And though the question, my hunch was right. He really helped us a lot with all that stuff. Um, highlights for Mike, there's a couple of them. There's a big goal against Cole Harbour in the Western Valley Tournament in that game that we won. And we think we're right by this, but we're going a little bit by memory. We had a goal, a game against East Hans early that we tied 5-5. The late goal was just in the dying seconds of the game, and I think they cut for us as well. So, all the highlights. Great season, Mike. skating stride that he generates a lot of speed. He plays his position very, very well, very reliable. You don't have to worry about him uh, getting caught in the wrong spot very often. Gives us good offensive pressure and excellent defensive play. One of the guys that you like to have over here in the penalty killing situation. Brett also is a very, very good passer, very supportive of his line mates and, and help him generate offense uh, by working with his teammates. The, uh, I, I talked a minute ago about this questionnaire we passed out at the beginning of the year. And uh, in addition to the question that we talked about for Alex, we also asked the players to identify uh, a couple individual goals for themselves to set for the year. And uh, when Brett's came back, I was tremendously impressed by one of his answers. Uh, Brett, I think, has come to understand the value of his style of play and the defensive role that he gives us. And so for one of his goals, he, he put down that he wanted to score 10 goals this year. Not 80 goals, not 50 goals, but 10. And I thought, well, there's a remarkable young boy who understands his role and knows that he's going to do that and once in a while chip in with a goal for us. And uh, I thought that was incredible. And he ended up getting 12. And he <laughs> For Brett, probably the highlight, he'd gone on quite a stretch there. I don't know what it was, 15 or 20 games without breaking that goose egg. And then one night he busted out and got the big hat trick. But fortunately, <laughs> Mike wasn't there that night. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, great season, Brett. <laughs> Finally, our spark plug sentiment, Andrew Wallace. our other first year player, but uh, you would never know it by the, you know, the maturity and the determination that he did it, that he showed on the ice and how he worked in practice. I think he's quite something for a young man. Uh, it's a very strong skating stride, his edges, his ability, his puck handling, uh, very much part of his strong points. He uh, sees to play exceptionally well, a very strong passer, and his intensity another one of the things that we really, really noticed as coaches. The, uh, the other thing about Andrew, he's very much like setting up his teammates for goals. He got a pile of assists this year and took a lot of pleasure in that. The only, the only one he had a little trouble with is driving home quite often after games. Him and Mitchell would get a little scrap because Andrew would be talking about, Mitchell, I passed you the puck and you missed the net. How could you do that? <laughs> I, I, Andrew would never admit it about being his brother's fan, but uh, they, uh, he always uh, wanted to have a discussion with Mitchell about the chances that Mitchell blew on me. <laughs> it was quite entertaining on the drive home quite often. Uh, the highlight that for Andrew, I think, uh, was his play during the Sedna tournament. He had an excellent tournament, uh, really helped us have success, 
and probably in particular that Sunday morning game against Kitchener, uh, where you got an assist and scored the winning goal that was late in the game. So I think uh, you had a good year, don't you think, buddy? Yeah. All right. <laughs> attributes and as well Bedford Minor Hockey provides an award to, to be given to the players and uh, it's always challenging for coaches to identify an individual for giving awards but you try to work through that and bring it on with the guy that, that probably best deserves the, uh, the award. So we have four of those. First is most sportsmanlike and in terms of sportsmanlike we look not only at things like penalty minutes and that type of stuff, but uh, how they play physically or the aggressive style and get them in situate, get themselves in situations where uh, they might get a little bit of bumping and grinding and they're able to skate away from it. Do they support their teammates? Uh, are they very upbeat and positive all the time, even after a loss? And they understand the value of the game is in the playing of it and not in the result of the scoreboard and, and these kind of things. We had a number of players, of course, that fit all of those qualities. But we selected Peter Horwich. certain goals that he set for himself in terms of how he wanted to contribute offensively to the team and he felt that that was how the, the success and the contribution was measured but as this year came along he became very understanding of the role that he gave to the team it's not all about scoring goals it's about how you contribute in your own special way and he became very comfortable about that and I think he came to enjoy the game a lot more because of it and I'm talking about Andrew Harms. say no when you don't say uh, I'll 
will do my best shot. And uh, he, he started that at the beginning of the season. And, uh, he exemplifies hard work. He exemplifies dedication to the game. Uh, he's a great student to the game. And uh, he was just a pleasure to coach. And uh, I just love to stand behind him and watch him go to third party championship. Andrew Wallace. touches on all of the qualities uh, that we've just dealt with, improved, dedicated, and sportsmanlike. So it's kind of an all-around type award. And uh, coaches felt that this, uh, this young man gave us all of those things, improved substantially during the year, he worked hard all the time, and also was a very sportsmanlike player. And I'm very happy to recognize Michael Coach. so much the, uh, the videos didn't help in terms of, in a big way, in terms of analyzing the play and that kind of stuff, although they did. But there was a number of situations this year, I would say more on a, uh, on a personal level, with different players on the team, or situations that developed uh, with uh, our opponents and so on, where uh, there was friendships at stake, really, because of how I remember the game. But when I, was able, when I was able to watch what happened on the video and see more clearly what exactly happened, it really, uh, really saved me and saved some of the friendship for had with some people. We may not realize that, but it really, really means a lot. So, of course, behind every man doing this kind of thing is a very talented and able and willing woman. So if I care to come up for a minute. <laughs> I want to say, uh, Stephen mentioned that uh, I guess one of the assigned courses is uh, psychology of children and uh, as a result of Terry's and my involvement this year, they've added on psychology of parents. So Stephen, I think you'll, you guys will all be looking forward to taking that course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are great. I just oh, want to put them here, Todd. They're a video. They're a video. Yeah. They're a video. Yeah. custom made for the two of you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Gary. <laughs> And uh, finally, uh, I'd like to uh, say a few words to the two assistants that helped me this year. Uh, Mike Horwich, of course, and Steve Mayer. And, uh, <laughs> we spent a lot of time together preparing for games and in the dress room and practices and wrestling with different situations with the kids. And you uh, pick assistant coaches that you hope will reflect type of things you're trying to teach and become good people to work with as the season goes on. It's been very challenging uh, situations to work through and also some of the very rewarding times, of course, as well. And uh, I must say that uh, I did very well this year with the two guys that I asked to help. They, they love every one of your kids very deeply, cared a lot about them. I spent a lot of time teaching them. Pain every time they went down and they were hurt. And they cheered for them, of course, when they had their eyes. And they were tremendous support to me. So, with that, I also had one for one to recognize their spouses. So, Anne and Sharon, if you could come up as well, because they have to stay at home and do it. stands every once in a while on third yard. <laughs> and, uh, it was tremendous. It, uh, being with all of you, going to the ring, and uh, traveling on the road trips, gave the opportunity for all five members of our family to spend a lot of time together this winter. And as you all know, with the comings and goings in the modern world, it's, uh, it's quite a privilege to, to have had that opportunity. And um, as much as we put a lot into it, I think there's no question back more than twice as much from all of you. So thank you very much. For uh, allowing us to interact with the children we had all winter. I remember I think it was the uh, last couple games we played and it was said and I looked at either Mike or Steve on the bench and I said I just can't believe it's almost over. It's uh, quite touching, as Stephen said, that uh, you grow with individuals throughout the year, and you realize as a coach at the end of the year that it's a team that will never be together again. There will always be a few changes. It was very special for all of us, I'm sure, as coaches, uh, to be able to come to each practice and game and share that, uh, I guess, that dream that we all have as children playing a game of hockey, uh, the thrill of living, but also the knowledge that hockey is such a great game of life that we know that when we fall short at times, 
it makes it even better when we do succeed and we are champions down the road. Uh, I think uh, I can say with those dose that I've learned quite a bit from these young lads this year. I hope that I've been able to pass a little bit on to them. I hope to be able to work with them again in the future and uh, especially uh, with Mike and Steven, two very sensitive individuals uh, that I am so proud uh, to be able to work with and I'm sure you as parents are very pleased to have people of this quality of citizenship um, to interact with your children and uh, have a, probably a big part in what they're going to remember in the years to come is probably one of the more, more memorable times in their hockey career. So thank you, Stephen. And thank you. thinking about you guys too. There's no question about that. This year has been uh, one of those years, I think, in terms of my coaching uh, experience, whether it be in soccer or whether it be in hockey, it's been a real year of exponential growth for me and experiencing uh, a high level competition, uh, one filled with uh, areas and variables that I never considered before in dealing with kids and dealing with the parents, and uh, as Stephen said, uh, I, I hope I've been able to contribute in some fashion to their growth. I know they've contributed to mine, and uh, I hope to see all of them in hockey again next year, and sometimes we can work again with both the kids and the parents. Thank you. to a, a book and they each have a page dedicated to each of the coaches and to the team manager and it talks a little bit about the, uh, their thoughts over, over the season and I just had an opportunity to look at it just before we uh, had a great dinner and I just wanted to cover some highlights because I think they've really been able to capture the essence of both the season and the great individuals that, uh, that, that our kids were fortunate enough to be coached with. And in no particular order, uh, let me get, uh, get Tommy's first here. Uh, Tony, and I'm, I'm, kids, I'm not going to embarrass any, anyone here uh, by reading out names. I'm just going to pick bits and pieces uh, of, of your comments here, so I won't, I won't, uh, I won't take on anyone. But for Tony, uh, here's a page, and it says, uh, Thanks, Tony, for all those pre-game meals you made for us. You were very brave. Come on up, Tony. To let a huge pack of fairly reckless boys into your house. <laughs> here's here's one. Um, you're always cheerful, never mad, and you're always nice to us. When you go on hockey tournaments, you always book the best hotels for us. And you love <laughs> when you're eleven, you're a kid, not that early. <laughs> I think you are a helpful fan because every time when we are down by one or two goals, you are the one that I always hear cheering the loudest. <laughs> And every time when you write a newsletter for the parents and players, it is always clear. <laughs> I got the 
bear with me here. <laughs> Thank you so very much for everything you've done for our team. You have spent your free time to make calls so we could play hockey. You have given us all you could to arrange tournaments and all of the dinners. I wish I had a trophy to give you for all I have is my respect. And I think that really summarizes. Oh, wow. Here's a gift certificate to go to uh, the spa. I oh, hope you enjoy it. Cascades. Cascades. Oh. I know the place. <laughs> what you've taught me. Even when you were drilling pucks at me, I still had fun. <laughs> Sometimes it's in the stand and you talk to the squad, you know, oh my god. <laughs> Is the father-son game full body contact? No, it's called filling the cracks in the board. <laughs> you just wait, after we're done with you, there'll be no cracks in the board. <laughs> Dear Mr. Merritt, thanks for a great season. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. You always told us to keep on going, no pain, no gain. You told, you told us to keep up the intensity uh, uh, during all games. You're really fun to have as a coach. Once again, boys, I'm just picking up bits and pieces of You have been a great coach. Remember, you are what you eat. <laughs>
don't allow anyone other than Bedford to cross over that Bedford Blues zone because it's sacred. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're uh, getting a big kick out of it. And uh, this uh, I'll reflect many years down the road and I'll read it many, many times like a good novel. Uh, like I said before, uh, the kids have been great and this is something I cherish a long, long time. Thank you very much. All. I especially like the joke you told us in the dressing room, <laughs> DEI. Thank you for your sense of humor throughout the year before and after the hockey game. I like having you as an assistant because when Mr. Wallace isn't here, you are here and you still do fun drills with us. Also, you cheer me and the team up with your fun jokes. I never heard you say anything. <laughs> oh, and here's a first, and this is an example of their sense of humor. Um, you made a lots of jokes to cheer us up. The time when I got checked and mucus went all over my page, I wasn't very happy, but you cleaned it all up and said, that's getting the snot hit out of you. Mr. Wallace, thanks for everything this year. It has been one of the most funnest years I've ever had. <laughs> thanks for making me feel like an important member of the team. Hopefully we'll have the chance to play for you again. And even though we lost and came second, I still had fun. I learned from you that hockey is more than just scoring goals. It's a team sport where you all have to work together. You are the best of my favorite coach ever. Thank you. a great season. You helped everyone on the team a lot. You believed in each and every one of us. You made us work as a team. You made us play like a team. I'm very lucky to have you for a coach. Mr. Wallace, thanks for a great year. We are all winners with coaches like you. Thank you for teaching.
teaching me on ice and off ice skills, but most of all for teaching me never to give up on my dreams. My favorite saying that I learned this year is, it's not just a destination, sometimes it's the journey. Um, you taught us many things over the season, not just about hockey, but about life, through your sayings and words. When I grow up, and if I coach, I want to be just like you. I know everyone's anxious to clean up, but you just have to wait one more minute.